Pentium here. Hey Pentium, how are you? Mm. Quite well. Nice to have you. I didn't speak to you for a while. I mean, you visited once briefly, but we didn't speak to that. And that is why I'm here. I just don't want to remain too far aloof. Mm -hmm. Oh, how is your life? Interesting. Not always casual. A <laughs> good answer. I read between the lines. I see that you've gotten a good treatment already. As much as you should have for now. So I won't do that. What's my biggest ignorance in the moment? And what have I missed? <laughs> Your biggest ignorance. I love the way you speak. <laughs> Your biggest in ignorance. You have no biggest ignorance, I don't think. Um, you take care of a full-bodied life, so you are not ignoring anything. You are aware of many, many things, and more things than you should be aware of <laughs> sometimes. Um, okay, uh, what else is... Um, yeah, how is your dimension happening? Uh, is it... Fourth dimension? Oh, there are so many things on your world about all the different dimensions. Some of them are popular. Um, our dimension is not that much greater than yours. It's, I mean, to go from a third dimension to a fourth dimension is a step, yes. But it's not like a giant leap, like some people would have you believe. It's not like, whoa, not like that, no. It is like, oh, special realizations, special thought patterns, perhaps, and realizations of how to do things better, and how to um, move through situations and collect your thoughts better, uh -huh. and uh, you be aware of your chakras more. But it is not like stepping into sci-fi world, no. Not like no, that. Okay. No. No. Really? You will see what I mean when you get there. It will be like um, a natural continuation with some extra benefits. That's right, that's right. Oh. Uh, but then fifth dimension, you don't go from... I see some people, people say you're going from third dimension to fifth dimension. Yes, there's some fifth dimensional energy coming. But you're not going to jump from third dimension to fifth dimension. It's just not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. You cannot, it's like saying, I'm jumping from three to five. You know, the number three to the number five. You can't have three to five if you don't get four. <laughs> no, no, it's just a numbering system. Some people number your dimension as fifth. Yes, I know, but you know what? It is confusing. Um, Too many, because they should just make it as simple as possible. It's raw material. Yes, this is third density dimension. That's simple. You are in third density. When you go to fourth density dimension, that is fourth. Why make it more complicated by saying, oh, we're in the five, now we're in three. How do you understand that? They just want to be confusing. They want to sound more intellectual. They want to sound like they know more. But it is not that. How are they going to help the world ascend if they confuse them? <laughs> I understand. So, make it as easy as possible to ascend. Don't make it as hard to ascend. It is, that just... Uh, sullies it up. Do you understand? So, the veil... Yes, the veil... Uh, there is a veil between 3 and 4 when you look up. But when you look from 4 to 3, is there a veil? Of course. So how do you look down then? You go down. You look through. You look through the veil. We know how to do that. You don't know how to do it. We, we know how to look through the veils, and you do not know how to look through the veils. So. I heard that it is always that higher dimension can see through the veil down, but yes. can't see through the veil up. Correct. 
That's right. So how does it look when you look down through the veil? Not as different as you think. You see, it does look different. There are things that are different. Yes, 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 yes. yes. But it's like going back to an, an old memory. It's like when you were young. There wasn't computers or things of that nature, right? Right. So it's when you look back to your past and your your third <coughs> dimensional past, you see things differently. It was a different time. You were closer to nature. You did more things without the things that you have now. Yes. So when you go to the next dimension, it's like that. There's more things to help you there. There's more things that will make your life easier, but in the same sense, complicate your life. But when you look back to the third dimension, it's like, oh, it's like looking back to the Wild West. The things are still the same, houses, plants, trees, but things are done way differently. But how do you see that? How can you look at down to us? What's the way? Do you come to the window and look down? or There is a way. I cannot explain it to you, because um, it is a division. It's like a two-way mirror, in some senses. Yes, you should be able to, because different species look different and down to some dimension. Yes. Give me some example. Of what? Of looking down to some dimension. How do you see us? What's, you know, is What's it mental, different? technological? How do you do that? It's, it's a pretty much mental and technological, yes, because your way of thinking changes, but not in such a great deal that I can't communicate with you. Say, if I went to fourth dimension and I wanted to look down at my friends in third dimension, mm -hmm. how would I do that? I would I come to the see. device, press a button and say, look at third dimension. Yes, it, it is technologically possible, yes. But you see, we're so far advanced and in other ways uh -huh. as well. We've been in the fourth dimension a long time. So we've, we've way far advanced. And that's why we lost track of the third dimension, how to see it. The communication is the biggest difference. Give me a logistic example. Say, if I do that, I come to the four-dimensional ship. So I'm in the fourth dimension, right? Right. And I say, can I look down in the third dimension I need for my work, for my job, to see that, that, and that? What, ask, say, Takur, what she would do? To help me, or whoever can help. Me. I'm not sure I understand the question, but I'll try to. Give answer. me some logistics, some like tangible, something tangible. When I am in the ship, four dimensional ship, how do I access some dimension to see it, to glimpse in it? Well, we have different things. There's a dimensional shift, and then there is a dimensional spray, sort of see, like where there are many, many different dimensions. Yes. And the one that we are working with, that one is rate available. Uh -huh. Okay. That is where it's set to right now. Yes. And so we can walk into that and observe, or we can actually walk into that and come here. Yes. But there are different different things we can do with that. We don't have to come here. We can observe. Yes. yes. Or we can just come here. Or we can just target a certain area, yes, yes. or target the whole world. Yes. And so, but there are certain, when we target the whole world, it's usually for weather. Yes, yes. But um, when we target certain areas, or certain people, or certain subjects, yes. it can be done through technology, yes. So I'm on the fourth dimensional ship, and I ask you, you know, for my job, please, you know, for my galactic job, I need to look at Rochester, some dimensional Rochester. Yes. So you give me a device? I will walk into the dimensional device. Yes. And I will speak to it. Yes. And it will coordinate for me. Then I will acknowledge that this is what I want to do. Yes. And I only want to look and I only want to have a sp certain specific area, uh -huh. and then it will uh, perceive that and give me that information. 
and it goes right into your mind without uh, visual? It can if that's the way it's set. If it's not set for that, then I will just be observing. But if I need that information to come into my mind, I can have it do that. So it can be telepathic or visual? Because audio. what the thing is, if you set it to, to go absorb into your mind, and then you go there, then you absorb everything. But if you, there's just something particular, you go there uh -huh. and find it first, uh -huh. you absorb it and then shut it off. Yes. Instead of just having it absorb everything, yes, which yes. is um, too much. Yes. So you go to that particular thing, you say, I need, I need to uh -huh. collect yes, yes. it. Yes, can you continue? Yes. I need to collect that. Uh -huh. Yes. I need to collect that particular information. Oh. You collect it and then you say that is enough and it will stop. Uh, that makes perfect sense. Now, there are possibly some species like your species who can do it without technology, right? Deal what? Like Yael possibly can look at Rochester, third dimensional Rochester, without any technological help. There is a way it is more difficult. Uh -huh. Because you can be absorbed into the third dimension if you're not careful if you do it that way. Uh huh. You understand? Because that, in the natural sense, just looking through the veil, as you call it the veil, can actually absorb you into the other dimension. And therefore they would have to find a different way to get you back out. So, which would be the same means they take you out. Yes. So... Yes. And for us, that would not be as comfortable. Mm -hmm. Well, it, because now it's set for humans. Mm -hmm. So, but so they would have to reset it to be more comfortable for Yeo. So, um, what other question? What is the part? so? How often do you use natural, non-technological ways to look down to third dimension? That is for the scientists, many times, because they are they still do not completely understand the veil. They are able to manipulate it, uh -huh. but they don't, there are some parts of it that are still unknown. Because there are so many dimensions and so many veils, and each are slightly different. So that makes it very difficult to learn. It, there's no one set of physics for each veil. I mean, for the veils, your veil compared to another. Of course. So, the physics of each veil are different. So, and to learn that, and what makes them universal, because there has to be an element that is the same in all. Uh-huh. That has not been found. Oh. Is, it, is the veil conscious? That is another thing that they are looking at as well. It, it, it does seem to be, yes. Uh-huh. So suppose a child wishes to access third dimension. A four-dimensional child wishes to look at third dimension to learn, for example. Yes. What are procedures for that? They would have to be taught how to do it. Uh -huh. And if they're not ta taught how to do it, they would not be able to do it. They would not know where to start. There is a starting point and an ending point. Do you understand? Yes, yes. So if they do not know the starting point, they could not even access the veil. If they were, they had to be taught. Now, what's the difference between a human, Earth human, which happened to be in four, on the four-dimensional ship, and say Yael? Yeah, yeah. Yes. How would they dif What would be their difference in accessing third-dimensional viewing capacity? If they were both in fourth dimension. Yeah. Once again, the human would have to be taught how to to see through it, how to get through it. Uh huh. And if, without being taught, they would not have a, the slightest idea where to begin. It took many hundreds of years to learn where the starting point was. Okay. So, in order to access that, they would have to know the starting point, and then there are a few steps. How difficult is it to learn? It's really not that hard to learn, uh -huh. because the, the simplicity of it was the most complex part. Uh -huh. Do you understand? Yeah. It was so simple, no one could possibly understand how simple that it was. Mm -hmm. So, to access it is just a set of thought patterns uh -huh. 
in sequence. So, so um, but you must have them in the right sequence or else you can't get through. But it, it is so simply understandable. If I were to tell you, you'd go, oh, that makes perfect sense. Uh -huh. But hundreds of years before they could access it. Because you know why? They couldn't put themselves in that simple sequence. Uh -huh. So, Does the human have to be telepathic to... No. To do that? Okay. No. Now, uh, Douglas mentioned that it looks like the colonies are higher dimensional than our Earth's dimension. Yes. Are they in between third and fourth? When you go to the colonies, you have to be you have to move to fourth if you go physically. Uh -huh. If you go in spirit, you do not have to move from uh -huh. spirit to, to fourth, no, no. third dimensional spirit to fourth dimensional. That, there's no such thing. Because the spirit is the spirit. So uh, the holograph is the holograph. You don't have to change. Uh -huh. So that is how they bring them on, is subconscious and spiritual. So the colonies are four dimensional now? They, the ones from Grukvik near always were. Well, no, that's not true. They weren't. They were on Earth. Some of them were third dimensional. But they've moved them all into the fourth dimensional at this time. <coughs> ah, so the visitors who visit physically, they just become four dimensional. They may, yes, they become fourth dimensional. There are only a few that they bring in like that, perhaps James and Randolph and Douglas and a few others. So what percent of the colonists are four dimensional physically? Um, maybe 20%. Wow. That's the highest percent it could be. Wow. And how about me? What about you? Same you came thing. in spiritually. Only spiritually. Mm -hmm. Non-physically? You came in non-physically, yes. Ah. Well, I have to go now. Thank you for explaining so many important things. These oh, were burning and uh, we weren't answered for a long time. Finally, I got some. Oh, places. yes, I know. So many secrets. With, right now, I think the problem is there's too much information and some of it's too confusing. And it's too messed up. There are those, the darker entities are throwing out information mixed with truth and causing everything to be very confusing. It cannot be that way much longer. And in fact, it will not stay that way if certain things are going to happen. So, um, but right now there's so much information that just, if you, if you bring it all together, it doesn't make sense. And it to, if you want you to rise in your ascension, it has to be universal. It has to come in a form that everyone can understand and everyone be on the same thought pattern. So it is not that way right now. There are those that have jumped from third to fifth and they're in the fifth now. How can they be? How can they be? You can, I mean, think people, think. I mean, just make yourself aware of, of logic. It's only logical to move up one step at a time lest you trip and fall back down to the bottom. <laughs> so... It's just numbering, that doesn't matter. But it does matter. It will matter. It will matter. And the reason why it will matter is because you have to all come to a universal understanding and there has to be one, one set of numbers yeah. so that everybody can be on the same understanding. So they say, oh yes, the fifth is actually the third. Well, how is every human going to understand that? I don't think they're going to. So, they just need to simplify. They need to bring things back to the, a simpler form. Changing the topic, how is my hybridization going? Infusions. I don't know. I have to ask to occur. That's okay. Don't, you know, don't bother. Which ones did you have? Uh, I started, said, uh, Yael, Liren, Nina, and Arturian. Nina is complete. Oh.
Octorian is next. And it already started. It's only at 0.2%. Uh-huh. But Nina has completed 5%. 5% uh, in uh, which part of the body? Whole body? The whole of? DNA part, yes. The whole, whole body received Nina? Oh, it's in the DNA. Whole. I was thinking that it's not uniformly distributed in the body. I do not know. I'd have to ask. That's okay. But it is in the DNA, 5%. All right. All right. And I said I had to go, and I am having to go. Okay. Our blessings and much appreciation. It was a fun visit. Nice to be connected with you. And you're in wonderful uh, mood today. Yes. Nice.